Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this session um, that was organized as a collaboration between a number of um, our ladies groups as well as RSC Africa. Um, we're very happy to have Dr. Angelique Trustler here from the Carpentries, who will be taking us through um, resources to begin your journey with R. Angelique um, has been working in this community for a long time, and I'm sure she's going to share some very valuable tips and tricks for us. Thanks, Angelique. Thanks so much, Anelda, and thank you, Sumi, for inviting me to the event. Um, disclaimer, I'm recovering from the flu, so if I sound like I have a frog in my throat, I probably have one, and I have, uh, uh, maybe I need to turn my mic off just to cough or something, so please excuse me, I do apologize for that. Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my video just to help with bandwidth, if that is okay with you all. Um, and let me get started with sharing my screen. Can I have a thumbs up if you can see my screen? Yes, yeah. I can see it. Okay. Awesomeness. Thank you so, so much. Ooh, I don't want to leave the meeting. I just want to open um, all the Zoom chats and everything so I can see if there's any questions. I have shared the link to the Google Slides you see in front of you at the moment in the collaborative document. All the resources I'm going to be sharing today um, is already there, and I'm sure we're going to share more as the conversation develops. So um, let's get started. All right, everyone. My name is Angelique Trussler, as Analda has mentioned. Um, I've worked with Analda, it feels like, since pre-2017. But I probably have the dates wrong. It might be before that. So we um, know each other from the Northwest University Pottersham campus. And it's great to see so many um, carpentry supporters in the room. I'm not going to call them out by name, but uh, great to have you in the room. And I know you are part of our Ladies Gaborone as well. Um, I am the African Capacity Development Manager at the Carpentries. And uh, my main role is to build capacity in programming and um, data science in Africa. So whatever that looks like and different opportunities arise. Um, and like today, I can share some of our, our um, lesson material and other resources we have at the Carpentries with you today. So I hope I can um, help you on your journey to start with R. Just a brief um, a summary of what we're going to be chatting about today. I'm going to give you an overview of the Carpentries, who we are, where we come from, and what we aim to do. And then we're going to jump into some resources to begin your journey with R, particularly that in the carpentries. Um, I would like to give you a snippet of what you need to know before starting with R. However, I do acknowledge that many of you in the room already know this, but I do want to show you what a typical lesson at the carpentries looks like, specifically um, data carpentry. And I will explain exactly what that means in a, in a short bit. Um, other resources. We can also share resources with each other in the document because I don't think I'm the only one that knows anything about R in the room. And then I would like to um, give you the opportunity to see how you can get involved in the carpentries and maybe there's an opportunity for collaboration for many of us. So let's hop into the next slide. Um, the carpentries are not a nonprofit project. And we have a global volunteer community of learners, lesson developers, trainers and instructors who teaches foundational coding and data science skills to researchers worldwide. And if I talk about researchers, uh, it can be researchers in any context. It can be in a university context, it can be in a private practice, it can be in corporate. Uh, it doesn't only, uh, uh, how can I say, you don't have to be registered at a university as a student or as a lecturer, as a professor to um, be part of this community. Our lessons include R, as we are here today, but also Python, spreadsheets, open refining, Git, and I'll, I'll touch a bit more on how these all work together um, in our lessons. And something that's really important to note is that we all our lessons at the Carpentry falls under the Creative Commons licensing. And what this means is that you can use the lessons in your own capacity, if you're an instructor or train at the Carpentries or not. The only thing we ask is that you acknowledge that you use them. The reason why we ask this is that our community of lesson developers, trainers, and instructors have worked really hard to test and um, iron out the kinks in the lessons. And we want to acknowledge our community and acknowledge the work they have done in developing these lessons. 
And lastly, we build community, uh, local capacity oh. in teaching and learning. And that's my role specifically. I build community and local capacity in Africa. Now I'm going to jump right into the workshops we offer at the Carpentries, uh, just to explain to you a bit more about what we do. So we have volunteer instructors um, alongside our helpers, and they use Carpentries lessons to teach foundational skills and perspectives for working with software and data. Now, pre-COVID, these um, workshops were only offered in in-person events. However, COVID gave us the opportunity to also offer online workshops, and they are very, like I say, popular in Africa. We, I think this year we have not offered one in-person event yet, for many reasons, I think, but um, it's very convenient in the African context, but also comes with a bunch of challenges, as you can imagine. So if we move on, now what do we teach at the Carpentries? We have these workshops, and I just told you about our volunteer base, and we build capacity. Now what do we teach? And this is where we're going to start clicking around and we'll start showing things to you. So before we go ahead, um, we have three different projects, if I can say that, within the Carpentries. You can also see it as three different schools of core curricula um, we teach in Carpentries workshops. There's many others, and I'll show you about them uh, um, in a bit, but the core curricula that has to do with R, I kind of pulled them out for us for the purpose of this presentation. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't want to lose anything there. There we go. Thank you, Anelda. Much appreciated. Um, right, let's continue where we ended off. Um, we are looking at the Carpentries core curricula at the moment. And as I mentioned, there's three projects or also seen as three schools. And the first being data carpentry. And data carpentry is for, uh, well, our, I want to say, a compilation of um, lessons, very discipline specific. And I highlighted three lessons or three yeah, lesson materials here that have a um, very established um, R material that I think would really benefit if you are a novice R user. So the first being ecology. So this is for your biological sciences, a geospatial, the geosciences, and then for social sciences. And for the purpose of today, I would like to show you a bit more about the ecology lesson. And the, I'm going to open the lesson now for you and show what it looks like. But I want to have a disclaimer before I open this um, link, I want to say that the data carpentry material and together with library carpentry and software carpentry consists of various um, episodes, right? Different, um, let's say, objectives in a sense. And they go together with other open software. And I, I didn't mention this. Um, the Carpentries material is, for the most part, I'm trying to think of an instance where it's not, and I can't think of it. For the most part, we use open software. So it's free to use for anyone. And uh, I think that is what makes our material very popular. So when I open the ecology lesson, you will see spreadsheets, you'll see open refine, and then you'll see R, because these lessons build on top of each other. Because when, as a researcher, right, you start with gathering your data. Yeah. And you gather the data maybe in a spreadsheet format, but then we need to clean the data. And we clean the data in spreadsheets as well, but a bit more heavy cleaning can be done in OpenRefine, which is an awesome filtering tool, um, cleaning your data, seeing you can get a bit of descriptive statistics in there as well. And then taking that data set and moving into R and analyzing the data set. So let's move into the ecology lesson. And you'll see when you go into our lesson material, it gives you a description of what this material is all about. They say the workshop uses a tabular ecology data set from the um, portal project teaching database and teaches data cleaning, management, analysis, and visualization. So data cleaning and management is probably possible in R. However, there are other tools that we can use um, easily to um, clean our data and just have a look what is going on and also you manage the, the data capturing process. So I don't know if I highlight this, you probably should be, can you, yeah, you should be able to see this, right? So we have lessons in English um, and um, lessons in Spanish. 
that's being uh, in beta phase. You can see that at the moment. And we have an overview of the ecology workshop, but I want to show you the different facets thereof. So you have data organization and spreadsheets, data cleaning and open refine. You can also do data management SQL, but what are, you are interested in is data analysis and visualization are for ecologists. So don't be, um, I want to say, disheartened by the word ecology. Ecology is basically the data set that is being used for this training. The social sciences is, has a social science data set and genomics is a genomics data set, but they do differ each of these lessons in what is discipline specific needed, right? What's also very nice here is you can see the maintainers of these lessons are Carpentry's um, community members. And they work tirelessly and tiresomely when there's updates to R or package updates, or there's some problem with um, the lesson, um, you know, something changed or something doesn't work anymore. They help us. And I do want to acknowledge these are the individuals that help us with, um, you know, making sure our lesson material are up to date. But you are more interested in the data analysis and visualization for R. So I want to take you a bit more in there. And what you see is this is a brand new, um, uh, I want to say, website page. It has been rolled out the last three, four weeks. It's called um, our workbench. And it works better in low bandwidth situations. And I think that's very important to notice. So if you look in the page, on your left-hand side, you have the different episodes and exactly what this um, lesson contains. So before you start, what do you need to know? We're going to chat about that in a bit. But where do you get your data sets? How do you install um, your software? An introduction to R, starting with your data, manipulizing, analyzing, and exporting data with Tidyverse package, um, data visualization with ggplot2, and then how to use SQL databases in R. So if we scroll a bit through how do you start, we have a very clear install R and R Studio guidelines. When you have to update R and R Studio, what packages do you need to install? How, where do you download the data, et cetera? What's very interesting here is, and what is new to this workbench, as I mentioned earlier, you can download a lesson handout. And if I'm, this is it gets into R Markdown that you can open in R. So all the um, code and exercises and everything that's in these um, lessons, you can download um, if you don't want to work online and you have limited internet um, access, download this R Markdown file and you can work it at home while you don't need internet access. I want to take us maybe to the state of starting with data, just to give you a feel of what these lessons look like, right? So how do you load your survey data? A lot of the material has some verbiage, but the instructors would normally teach. These lessons are um, you know, taught, but it can be self-taught at home without being in a workshop, right? This is, I think, the flexibility thereof. So there is some verbiage explaining to you how to enter, um, what, you, what you need to enter, obviously, in your script. But then you have a nice example that can be copy and pasted if you have an issue um, with or run into some problems. And the same with reading data into R. You can see there's some R script. These show R script, these little R brackets show you, and then the output, what it should look like. So this is what a typical lesson material would look like. Um, I feel it's very detailed um, with the description, but I would love any of you who work through this to give us feedback. We always open to any feedback, um, you know, to improve our lesson material. Um, we have data frames, explaining what data frames are, how do we inspect data frames, some of the arguments that you can use and then there's nice challenges. What's nice is the solutions are showed here at the bottom. You can see you would, um, what is the class of the subject survey? I'm jumping quite around. So 
Um, I apologize if this does make sense. Um, but I want to show you the, the one of the strengths of the carpet use material. We have challenges and then the solutions available there. I want to scroll down a bit more to another challenge. After you read through the material, do the exercises, there's some challenges and the solution can be found there as well. Now, for those of you in the room, um, can I maybe see in the um, chat, how many of you would like to see the genomics lesson? Is there anyone I'm going to maybe just put my video on for, ah, awesome. Simasani, awesomeness, thank you. So, um, oh no, ah, Angelique, I apologize. There we go. Apologies, everyone. It's One day. A lot of interest in the genomics lesson. Awesomeness. Let me, because it doesn't have necessarily R in, but R can be used. So I want to quickly take you through that as well. Um, so let's just go. So as I mentioned earlier, I pulled out lessons that have very strong R focus to them. But genomics is one of our very popular lessons as well. So what I would love to show you is just our um, genomics um, lesson. And you'll see it goes to the same format. Um, how did I get to the genomics lesson? It's linked from the Google slides I sent you. The only thing is I already linked them to the ecology curriculum. That's why you saw that first. If we scroll right at the top, we can go back to genomics. And what I would like to show you is we have a data analysis and visualization and R lesson in alpha phase. And alpha phase means it needs testing and they're currently working on that. And um, I, I, I would like to show this to you because I think it's very important to have individuals like yourself in the room look at the lesson, does it make sense, what is needed, because it's an alpha um, um, testing phase, right, we need feedback, we need people to work through this lesson and say, oh, this doesn't make sense, this doesn't work, and um, we will be very appreciative if you do have time to work through this lesson, so what makes the um, intro to R and R studio and genomics a bit different is the way we would use R for genomics is different to what we would use in analyzing, um, let's say, social science data or bio data. So I would like to take you just through the type of episodes we have in the genomics lesson. We have introducing to R again. What is R? What's the advantages of R? No, um, creating R Studio project. I'll take you through that in a bit if we have time. Um, I'm just keeping an eye on the chat. We have R basics. So you'll be able to create the most R, common R objects using, uh, well, including vectors. You'll understand what vectors have, um, that vectors have modes, which correspond to the types of data they contain. So what is nice about the rollout of the uh, workbench, again, is it's a very clear cut way of learning and seeing what the questions are or the questions that would be answered in that particular lesson, but also what are the objectives. We can move on with um, introduction to example data sets. Our basics continued using packages from the Bioconductor, that, which is a project as well. Data wrangling with Tinyverse, data visualization with ggplot. And then where can you go for help when you run into some challenges, right? So you can see there are similarities to the ecology lesson, but also differences when it comes to discipline specific things you would do are with. Again, I do uh, caution you gently that this is an alpha lesson. I wanted to show it because it's very popular at the moment, but I would love to hear from an African cohort about this lesson. So if any of you are looking into, um, I want to say, going through this lesson, learning more about R from a genomics perspective, this is definitely the lesson for you. Um, let me just share my slide again. There we go. Um, I think let's quickly go through the social science page as well. So the social science page is very similar to ecology. Um, however, it has a social science data set specifically from the SAFI teaching database, which is, um, I want to say, agricultural data from 
Mozambique, if I'm not mistaken, which is very special to me to have a data set from Africa being presented in uh, Carpentry's curricula. So it starts with data organization spreadsheets, very similar to ecology. So it shows you how to use um, how to use spreadsheets, how to um, use it to capture data. Uh, there might be validating ways to make sure that data is captured correctly, because I know um, human error, it's going to happen. A, a four might be a 44. Uh, you know what I mean? I doubt if you've had captured data before we all have gone through that, right? So data cleaning with open refined for social scientists and data analysis and visualization for R for social scientists. And I think we're more interested in what this episodes will look like. So let's quickly click in there. And I want to run through the episodes again. Again, we start with before we start in the introduction to R, starting with data, data wrangling with uh, DPLR. This is also a package in R. Um, this is a, I, I'm not sure we use that in ecology but I am stand corrected. Um, we have tidier, um, ggplot, and then getting started with R markdown and then processing um, JSON data. So this is something that adds onto it because in social science data, we have a lot to do with um, using data sets, subsetting, et cetera. And I think this a whole lesson might be better equipped for behavioral sciences, social sciences, um, where if you are come from biological sciences background, the ecology lesson might be best for you. And if you, ooh, apparently I'm going to just stay in this because apparently it's not working so well today. So if you want to come from a discipline specific perspective, data carpentries, our lessons are definitely for you. It takes you from a um, beginner's level it doesn't assume any prior knowledge from R. It helps you through the research process in a sense. So it takes you from where you would capture your data, where you clean your data until you analyze your data. My um, personal opinion is that if you are new to R and you don't have any prior knowledge, I think starting with a data carpentry lesson would be great because it will give you that awesome, awesome foundation to then move on to software carpentry lessons. We'll get there in a bit. Why did I include library carpentry? Because I wanted to show you what other options there are. So um, library carpentry is another school or project, as I mentioned earlier. And um, the, this information in those projects don't include um, as a core curriculum are, but it is for individuals working in libraries and information sciences. It's aimed at them getting into Git and Shell and basic Unix coding. Um, very popular in Africa, running library carpentry workshops to get to know data structures, regular expressions, et cetera. So if you are interested in that as well, because remember in R, you can have JavaScript and regular expressions are used to code um, JavaScript. So thanks, Mintz. I'm seeing your question and I'm going to touch on that a bit later. Very excited that you are um, interested in how to become an R instructor. So if you are interested in learning how to use regular expressions, um, the library carpentry lessons are definitely for you. So moving on to software carpentry, I think these are a bit more advanced R in L um, R um, workshop material. So as I mentioned, I would start as a novice working through the data carpentry, but our um, software carpentry material has two R lessons that I want to showcase to you today. So we have programming with R and R for reproducible scientific analysis. And let's have a look what these include. Right. So immediately you'll see it looks a bit different than the data carpentry lessons, the, the, the landing page, right? So we have our core lessons in English and our core lessons in Spanish, where, um, and then there's additional lessons currently being developed, right? Where the previous one was broken down to, by ecology, genomics, geospatial sciences, et cetera, et cetera. But what I want to show you here is they start, we have Unix shell version control with Git, program with Python, but very important, programming with R. And again, you can see the maintainers that maintain these lesson materials. So let's have a look what the programming with R unpacks. So when it comes to 
um, they use, a, they call it an inflammation data set. But again, that's for your biosciences, um, how to create functions, analyzing multiple data sets. So you're starting to see now, now we started with the basics and now multiple data sets, command line, um, best practices for writing R code, dynamic reports, making a package in R. If that's something you're interested in, this lesson's definitely for you. Um, there's a, another introduction to our studio, addressing data, reading and writing CSV files, um, the call stack and loops in R. So you can see this is becoming a bit more, I feel you need prior knowledge of R before you can um, really get used to and jump into this um, curriculum. Now R for reproducible science analysis is gonna take us to that same page and Let's see what that package or this lesson unpacks. So you can see here we are um, looking at a bit more advanced R functions and analyses with data structures, exploring data frames, subsetting data, control flow, um, and how to create publication quality graphics with ggplot2, vectorization, writing data, Deplier again, we're seeing um, data framing with tidier. Uh, Knitter, I've never used that, but it sounds very interesting, what I've read, and writing good software. So I hope I could showcase for you, if you are a novice user of R, I would recommend you start with, let me just put the slide on again, um, start with data carpentry lessons, where it takes you from installing, working through, um, the basics, setting up your data, setting up a project. And if you are looking for more advanced skills in R, your software carpentry, um, the programming with R and R for reproducible scientific analysis is definitely one for you. So let me move on. Now, these aren't the only R lessons we have at the carpentry. And I have opened the incubator website on my side, but I want to tell you what the Carpentries Incubator is. So it's a place for collaborative development of new lessons. So community members who want to, um, I want to um, say contribute, uh, sorry, the flu is getting the best of me. So Carpentries community members who want to contribute other lessons than what we can, I just showed you now. They start from pre-alpha phase. So this is before it's even properly finished, written, uh, it goes through alpha, it goes through beta testing, and then um, if it's good enough and uh, there's a need in the community, it becomes as part of the core curriculum. But I want to show you how to use this, because um, how many of you in the room are interested in uh, machine learning, perhaps? I'm, I'm taking just one example. Maybe if you can just uh, put a thumbs up. Um, ah, Simasani says she is interested in uh, machine learning. Um, some advanced analysis as well here. And these are, um, I would say, these are not necessarily for novice R users, but those of you in the room who wants to learn more about machine learning and big data, there's definitely lessons in R here in the incubator for you. So again, I remind you links to all this materials in the Google slide. So um, it will either be embedded in the slide itself or in the note at the bottom. Um, so if you look at the incubator page, it says design, develop, teach, reflect, and repeat. And that's exactly what we do, right? You design a new lesson, you develop it further, you teach it, you reflect on what went well, what didn't go that well, you know, add, adapt here, adapt there, and then repeat the uh, process. But what I want to show you is the browse lesson function of the incubator website. So if you click on the browse, there we go. You can see, you can browse community developed lessons. So you can explore the full collection of lessons developed by the Carpentries community in the table below. And without scrolling, I could immediately see there's machine learning R and in English. It's in beta version, which is amazing. This is what we want, right? Beta version means it's been tested, it's been adapted. Um, so a data carpentry style lesson on some uh, machine learning techniques in R. And it seems like it's focused on tabular data. So you, I would just type in R by tags, and then you can see, I wouldn't say it's foolproof, but it already 
um, sorted a little bit for you in here, right? So you have the machine learning lesson over here. I'll just scroll a bit down. We have analysis interpretation of bulk RNA sequencing data um, using bioconductor. The bioconductor data science production. Those of you in the biosciences will know I am not so familiar with biosciences. I'm a behavioral scientist. Um, if we scroll down a bit, business analytics and R, those of you in the room might be interested in some business analytics. If I scroll but down, carpentry style lesson on how to use R Studio together with Git, GitHub to promote open science practice. And I think this is one of the up and coming lessons to keep your eye on because the carpentries is all about open science, um, open science practices. And I use GitHub on a daily basis. I think many of you in the room might too as well. So this might be a great lesson to look into the future. Let's scroll a bit down. Oh, this is interesting. Here is a data analysis and visualization in R for um, archaeologists modified from the data carpentry R workshop for ecologists. So the ecology lesson I showed you was adapted for archaeology, more a archaeology data set, I assume, right? Um, let's scroll a bit down. Here is data harvesting in agriculture. I know um, we have a big Kenyan community interested in agriculture and the biosciences up here. This might be interesting for them. If scroll down a little bit more, I, oh, this is endless. High dimensional statistics in R. If I scroll down, um, introduction to Conda for data scientists. You can see there's some um, cross um, programming usage, Conda R, Python. If I scroll a bit more down, we have mach another machine learning and R lesson. So this is pre-alpha, meaning it's still being developed, but I'm sure any feedback, the maintainers, the lesson developers will be absolutely grateful for any feedback. Let's do one more. Um, introduction to probabilistic programming. Um, oh, there's another one. Introduction to R for metagenomics. Those of you who use uh, big data sets, um, so what I wanted to show you here is while I showed you the core lesson curriculum, these are stable lessons that we tried and tested. Um, there are many other lessons in the works. If you would like to work through them, we would really appreciate any feedback you have on them. So I've perhaps I've overwhelmed you <laughs> when it comes to, um, let me just get that there, there we go, overwhelming a lot of knowledge. However, I do hope I am sufficiently giving you resources to part, well, um, let's say, um, start your journey with R. And what I want to also highlight for you is that R Studio has a bunch of cheat sheets that has been my saving grace in using R in a, a, a many instances. And it's been hosted in GitHub, maybe for those of you, I can share this quickly in the chat with an crime. And this is amazing. So you can see if you scroll down, there's a lot of files and don't be overwhelmed by um, what's going on here. It's basically a repository. And what that means is it hosts a bunch of PDFs um, and you can see other files as well. But one I would like to show you is base R. It's, I hope it opens quickly. Oh, it's not too big. There we go. So the cheat sheet looks like this in a sense. What is nice is it gives you on a one pager, quick go to global overview of what you need to do. If I want a for loop, this is the type of argument I can look at. If I want a while loop, I want this. If I want to create a vector, this is how I do. What vector functions do you get? How do I select vector elements? Reading and writing data. What are the basic um arguments you use in R. And this is going to come quite handy when you start writing your own scripts in R, right? I want to go back and find another one. Let's quickly see here. Ah, data import. This will be quite interesting. So when you start reading data um, with Reader, the package in R, right? How do we use it? How does it unpack? Um, how do I put things in columns? How do I read it? How do I save it? Um, how do I export into spreadsheets? And very interesting, Google Sheets. Th these cheat sheets has been such a great resource for me, myself, in my own career, not just at the Carpentries. So I'm sure everyone in the room here has different interests. Um, here's data import, data transformation, data visualization, tabling, 
um, designs. Um, oh, I'm just scrolling down here now. Ooh, I'm seeing so many things. It's overwhelming me even now. So Lubridate, I'm seeing that how to use Lubridate. Um, um, nimble as well. But what I want to do is, while we're on this page and we're specifically focusing on cheat sheets, I want us to go back one to see the one, let's say, um, file back. And when you get into the RStudio repository um, in GitHub, you can see the shiny package. You have RStudio, R Markdown, the cheat sheets, and Reticulate. But they have so many resources here for you to start working through. I do think um, I, I don't. Uh, we're going to go down a rabbit hole if I start um, um, clicking into this. But I wanted to share this as a resource to you. When you have gone through the novice training of R and you feel confident now can play around. And uh, remember, you can't break anything in R Studio. It will just need it to be rerun properly. That's pretty much. Um, oh, thank you, Jeremy, for sharing that. There's an R package that downloads specific R cheat sheets from the repository maintained. Um, can we add that into the uh, collaborative document as well for others to see? Thanks, Jeremy. I do appreciate you sharing that. Um, so I wanted to show you this GitHub repository for our studio with the cheat sheets. It is amazing. Again, I would first have novice training in R and then I'll dive into this because it might be a tad overwhelming. So let's go back to the thing. And now what do you need to know before starting with R? And I want to go back to the Carpentry's um, ecology lesson material. And I want to show you what are the type of information we share with, and I'm making a broad assumption here that some of you might be novices in the room, um, hence the title of this presentation. And I want to show you what are the type of information we share with individuals in the workshop. Now, I just need to quickly um, find, there we go. There we go. So this is the data visual, data analysis and visualization for R, um, in, uh, well, in R or ecologists. And um, we looked at this earlier. And what I want to do is take you through the before we start part in a typical R lesson. And I think we might have a bit more time, so that's okay. So we start with discussing what is R and what is R Studio. And we um, explain that R is your base program, but alone R is very much a, it doesn't have a point and click function. So you need to know a lot of scripting, you know, um, some coding, um, because it's a, basically just a console open in front of you. Where our studio um, embeds R, and it has a bit more way, well, like we say, that's a popular way to write R, but it has a, a nice um, GUI, in a sense, a graphical um, user interface, where you can see well, what's going on in front of you. I will, there's a, a picture at the bottom of this lesson. I'll show you the different parts of R as well, if we have time. So why do you want to learn R? And we go about and say, R does not involve lots of pointing and clicking. And I've just said that above. It doesn't, it's not like um, other programs like SPSS, Strata, et cetera, where you will say file analysis. You have far more control over the code that you put into it. You have far more control in how it's analyzed what um, algorithm you use, et cetera, et cetera, especially when it comes to a very um, advanced analysis like um, native variable modeling, where the type of regression analysis you use is very important for the type of data you have. So you don't need to use a stock standard algorithm from a statistical program. That's what I'm getting to. Our code is great for reproducibility. Um, if most, some of you have used SPSS or other abstract, et cetera, where it is possible to export the code. Here you have code already generated, saved. You can rerun it. There are um, advanced packages where you can, um, you know, import more data, like in um, big data instances. You can um, put big data in um, uh, or update as the data gets, um, you know, gathered and then run your sequencing over and over, especially machine learning. This is typical what you would have done. It's interdisciplinary and extensible. And I want to also say it's not limited to quantitative analysis too. There are various qualitative packages, very similar to Atlas TI, that you can import into R, um, or install into R rather. 
And that's very important to notice uh, that it's not necessarily only for quant analysis. Our works on data of all shapes and sizes. If you have um, done analysis maybe in spreadsheets, you are limited to X amount of lines where R will never have endless lines. Like I said, big data, machine learning, totally doable in R. It produces high quality graphics. Those of you interested in publishing papers, um, the, journal, um, the academic journals always want high quality graphics. And ggplot2 is one of the packages that our lessons work with. And that will be great um, to get to know how to use it. R has a large welcoming community, Stack Overflow R community online. Um, you can get more information that also our ladies global as we are here today. And um, the Carpentries has a, a Slack workspace. I'll show you where to get access to that if you are working through the lesson material and you have some questions. Please feel free to on, ask any questions all over, right? R is not only free, but it's also open source and cross platform. And that is amazing. Right. I want to stop here, but I want to show you what the, I don't know if this is, you know, it's maybe I hope it's big enough for you. But when I spoke about R in our studio, basically the console, the square here at the bottom left, that is R. It says R version and the rest is R studio. So you can see what's going on in R. You have a great way to write your script, your environment. So all the variables you've created, all the data sets you have incorporated, as well as where you could help. Where do I find my files? Where do I see my plots? So this is a great way of visualizing your data. It's not a very point and click, but it's also a bit more point and click than R itself. So let's go back to the presentation because I'm not sure. Simasani, how much time do you think we have left? I think we, we have about 15 because we started. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's 10. more than enough. Okay, right. thank you. I'm just scared I'm, I'm using too much time. Okay, awesomeness. Um, let's go. Now, how can you get involved in the carpentries? But more specifically, I, um, I recall someone asked in the chat, how can I get involved as an R instructor? And I want to tell you a bit more about that before we um, go over to questions. Now, ways to get involved, you can check out our lessons on your own time. And this is where I um, spent a lot of our time today. I showed you through our data carpentry lessons. I showed you through the software carpentry lessons. And I just want to highlight the difference between that quickly again, where data carpentry is very much focused on how do I analyze data? And we know that analyzing data differs from discipline to discipline. That's why we have ecology data set, genomics data. We have um, social sciences, et cetera, et cetera, where software carpentry is more focused on how do I manipulate the software to do what I want it to do? And this is where the programming in R and then the R for reproducible and scientific research comes in. So you can also sign up for a workshop. You can go to thecarpentries.com um, on the main page at the bottom, you can see all the upcoming workshops. Many of them are still online, if not most. I, I don't want to um, sound too confident about that, but many to most of our workshops are online and many, if not all of them, are free to attend in Africa. So if you see an African flag with a little online globe sign next to it, that's an online workshop. And if you would like to attend one of them, please go ahead reach out to the host who, of the workshop and ask if you can attend online. I'm sure they would be more than grateful to accommodate you. You can also help at a workshop. So you don't need to be an instructor at the Carpentries to help. So if you go to carpentries.org and you have a look at the workshop, you say, you know what, I want to see what it is to be an instructor at the Carpentries. You can go and you can um, sign up as a helper. I'm sure the hosts and the other instructors will be more than grateful to have uh, uh, another hand to help. And this is in in-person events as well as um, online events. We have helpers who, um, how can I say, they help when you run into technical difficulties. Uh, they might run the Zoom room. They might run a breakout room, et cetera. Oh, um, Simasani, great question. Um, do we have any carpentry subjects who would like to share that? Let's, yeah, let's, I'll finish here and then let's share that. That will be awesome, right? 
and you can help at a workshop. You can, and, and this is shameless self-promoting of my community call, um, attend the African Carpentries Monthly Meetup is every fourth Thursday of the month. I would like to share um, a bit more of what you do at the Carpentries in Africa. Um, you can see it's been running since 2017. And here we discuss topics that are of interest of our instructors in the African context. So very much specific to African um, issues, resources, opportunities, upcoming workshops, previous workshops, anything to do with Africa, the carpentries, um, open science, data science, etc. Right. And I do invite you, we have on the 22nd of June, we have our next African carpentries call. Um, it's all linked in the Google Slides if you would like to attend. It is hosted between 12 and 1 South African Standard Time, and that's the same as Botswana time. Um, for those of you who are not um, in the same time zone, it's 10 to 11 UTC. Um, we are very grateful to have um, one of our carpentries instructors that was um, until recently based in Kenya, who's now a PhD student at Oxford, sharing with us the science journey to where they come today. And I think this is very important that we should share these journeys with each other and how we got to the particular points. So I do invite you to come and join us in that um, community call on Thursday. You can become an instructor at the Carpentries. And we're going to chat a bit more about how you can become an instructor because I saw a couple of, um, well, at least one that I can remember in there. You can teach a workshop once you become an instructor. You can help us um, maintain lessons. Um, we can, you can please contribute lessons. If you have a lesson idea, please reach out to me and I'll get you to the right person to learn how to develop your own lesson. That will be absolutely amazing. Um, contributions to Glossaria, and this is my passion project. And I want, I didn't open it here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Glossaria. There we go. So Glossaria is a open source multilingual glossary for computing and data science terms. I'm going to, it's probably not in the, uh, in the, uh, Angelique, I'm sorry. Right, it's probably not in the Google Slides, and I'll put that in it. Hang on. Before Angelique forgets, I'm telling you, with age, I forget these things. Um, there we go. You can see I put it in there. So let's go back, right? So it's a multilingual glossary for computing and data science terms. And you can see there's many languages. These, and uh, uh, we'll show you how it works in a bit. But we have Afrikaans, um, German, Bangla. I do think that is Hebrew. English, uh, Spanish, French. I think that's Hebrew. That might be Greek. Apologies. I am really bad with languages. Italian, uh, Portuguese, but very important. Setswana, Isikosa, Isizulu. And if we go down more, Swahili, Southern Sutu. We are really building a great database of African languages um, in um, Glossaria. So let's have a look at the key Swahili um, translations at the moment. So what you can see here, the it's I wouldn't say it is um, up to date 100%, but the community members have been amazing in translating data science terms from English into Swahili. And what you can see is here is um, this is, I will, I, my Swahili is really bad, but if we go to the English term now, we're kind of wrangling it now at the moment. But so remote login has been translated into Setswana. If we scroll through, I want to see if I can get another African language here somewhere. It's cheat. Okay, oh, there we go. So data visualization has been translated into Swahili, but also into Amharic. And that is the mother tongue of Ethiopia. You can see um, data scientists have been um, translated into um, Amharic and Swahili the data science as well. So this is absolutely amazing tool also to use if you, um, like me, have not been educated in English and data science terms might be new to you, this tool might be amazing. What I also um, work with our community members is we built this glossary. So what we do is we work together in a hackathon style. Oh, Angelique. I'm sorry, everyone. And a hack from style, we get together, we translate the terms into whatever language you speak. 
And um, it, this hackathon has been um, a biannual event in the African carpentries community, and it's been amazing in supporting those who are not mother tongue English speakers, learning data science and programming terms. And lastly, you can become a trainer. And I know at least of in this room, I'm not going to call them out by name, we have three trainers in the room for the carpentry, so this is amazing. And um, we train instructors. And instructors then run workshops at the carpentries. And um, this is various ways that you can get involved in the carpentries. What I would like to share with you is the welcome tip sheet as well. I briefly went over how you can get involved at the carpentries. But this is a, a tool, if you'd like to, so I'm not going to go through it. If you want to join our Slack workspace, there's a way, a, a description how to do that. I'll join our mailing lists, um, how to become an instructor. What additional resources are there? So I would like to share this with you um, if you would like to look a bit more further into what the Carpentries does. But before we go into questions, how, what's instructor training and what does it entail and why would I want to become an instructor at the Carpentries? Sorry, my voice is giving in a bit, but I should be able to do another five minutes. So the Carpentries instructor training is where trainers teach basic educational psychology um, classroom practices and how to apply both to teaching. So we are not assuming we all can teach, right? But we all need help with learning how to teach. So the Carpentries, thank you so much for sharing that, Anelda. The Carpentries has a very much educational psychology approach to teaching and our um, instructor training is very much based on the pedagogy of um, in-person coding and if I want to say that's not the right term but let me explain to you what I mean with that so I code while you code even in online settings if you're in a carpentry's workshop I will be in front of the classroom and I will be coding and you'll be coding with me so if I make an error you'll make an error and we'll learn from each other the instructors obviously know the content and um, we work together with you to not do a how can I say a chalk and talk I write on the board and you just see what I'm doing you are literally practicing your coding while I'm teaching in front and this is the same with online um, workshops I share my screen and you on your screen you coding with me so that's the pedagogy that the carpentries follows in a nutshell right so instructor training uh, if you want to know more is um, what outcomes do we discuss? And Anelda shared the link in the chat with you, but I want to uh, quickly just summarize that. So in instructor training, we discuss how do people learn? How can we help novices become competent practitioners? So how can we help people who have, have never learned R actually walk out with some skills that they can immediately apply in their own work. What is cognitive load and how does it affect learning? Cognitive load in a um, very short sentence is your capability of information to take in. If I give you, like today, I think I'm overloading you cognitively. I'm giving you so much information to digest that you're going to walk away perhaps thinking, oh, this is just maybe a bit too much. So how do we manage that at the carpentries and uh, in the workshops particularly? How can we create a motivating environment for learners? For many of us, if you think back when you started with any form of programming, not necessarily R, there was a sense of being afraid of the unknown, right? You're afraid because you don't know how and where and how and this is this script is writing but i'm getting all these errors and i don't know how right how do you keep motivating learners while they're still getting all these errors and then how do you run your own carpentries workshop so our carpentries training is um mostly often online or in person and it can be either two full days or four half days depending on what your schedule allows there are three checkout steps you can attend a community discussion or a regional community call like the African Carpentries call. You make a small contribution to a lesson. It could be indicating, oh, I see an error or grammatical error. It doesn't have to be reinventing the wheel. And you do a short five-minute teaching demonstration. So just a quick diagram showing you um, just how the whole process runs. And I mentioned about instructor trainers training instructors and instructors running workshops for learners. So I hope this does give you a bit of a better overview of what the structure of instructor training looks like. Um, 
Now, getting to the point of why would you want to teach a carpentry workshop, or for that matter of fact, why would you want to do instructor training? And I say, in the in essence, it makes the world a better place. I've seen individuals in a workshop that was so scared of using R or Python and walking out there and they could actually start importing their own data set and doing descriptive analysis. And that confidence boost, it gives that learner walking out there. That was absolutely amazing. So I feel I made the world a better place uh, or the, not just me, the, my fellow instructors as well. You can expand your own technical skills. I am far more proficient in R than I was before I became a carpentry instructor. I quite often create world maps in R, which I just love doing because it just looks so fancy, right? And the graphics are high quality. I just really enjoy it so much. I have a community that I can lean on. I run into issues most because I don't do it on a daily basis anymore when new packages are released and I want to play around with it. I need support. The community on Slack and the mailing list have been amazing helping me. And then you get to practice teaching. Not all of us are um, teachers at university. Maybe you would like to get better teaching skills. And this is definitely the for you. And that is the end of my presentation. But this is my contact information if you would like to get hold of me. Um, I know I shared it in the collaborative document as well. Uh, but angelique at carpentries.org, you can get hold of me there. Um, and I want to thank you for the opportunity to come share my thoughts and um, resources with you all. And I hope I did not overwhelm you and create cognitive overload. Um, and I'm going to leave it over questions or depending on how Simasani would like to continue with the session. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Angelique. Do we have any questions? I don't know if most of the questions were answered in the, the chat, because while you were giving your talk, um, Anelda and Yanita were answering people's questions, or do we have any comments instead? I saw a lot of questions now. Thank you so much, Anelda and Yanita. Great supporters of the carpentries as always. I do appreciate that. It's a lot of information, everyone. I do apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Oh, apologize. It's a good starting place, right? And people know where to get, get hold of all of us. So if there's any clarity, any of any further questions or whatever, then they know where to find you. They know where to find other people. Thank you so much, Nada. I see, I think Bensa, you have a question in the chat. Yes. Yeah, so uh um, Francis, I actually, it's not, I think most of my questions um, have been answered uh, by you alongside the training, which um, I was overwhelmed. I'll actually, the presentation was very insightful, and I really want to thank you guys for bringing this thing up. And also, um, my question is, um, actually, it's not a question. Regarding the, um, the certification for someone being an instructor is it paid up one or is it just free i don't know i just want to know oh, is it paid that's up a one? great question yeah. thank you so it is usually um it, you have to be part of a membership etc however as a um, capacity building in africa i do have an amount of free instructor training seats that if you want to um, attend instructor training please reach out to me actually get competent organ i can get you set up in the first instructor training course that you can participate in. We do want to build capacity, particularly in um, Southern Africa. So I know I see some Asani's head nodding. Um, the workshop offering rate is going up so much. We need more support, more volunteers in the community. Uh, but also if that's not what you want to do and you want to run your own community in Botswana, where in the, um, in the continent you are, this is um, why we run these events. And I do talk at these um, type of um, events as well. If uh, Mensa, you're interested in attending instructor training, please send me an email and I can get you set up with a code because I do have... Um, some codes to use um, for free training on the continent. And please, you can spread the word as well. If you have um, individuals or colleagues that would like to participate in instructor training, you can share this uh, presentation with them as well. Reach out to me and we can chat more about that. Uh, thank you very much, um, 
for that. And I would like to also encourage probably, um, you see um, in Africa here, we have different communities. We have Abuja R, we have the Ghana R, we have a lot of R communities. I would, I would like you, I think the information you just shared is very insightful. And I would hope that maybe in future, you could probably have a joint meetup where these other communities will be present, where you take them through. So I, it's just a suggestion. I was just thinking out loud as well. Oh yeah, please go ahead, spread the word. Um, if they want me to come and have a similar talk um, at their community events, I'll more than, uh, you know, I, I love talking to the community about the carpentries. Sometimes without flu, that would be nice. Yeah. But no, sorry, that's my sense of humor, right? Um, no, I really, this is my, I want to say my passion in life. I want to bring data science and programming to the continent. As a young researcher, my data was sometimes sent to the Western world to be analyzed because the idea was that Africans don't know how to analyze their own data. And that is absolutely not true. I want to bring um, skills to the continent where individuals can help themselves for future. And uh, that's my personal you know, thing. And if you get something out, out of that, that's amazing. And I will every single time I'll talk and I'll sell this, tell the story about how I got involved in data science and how I got involved to analyze my own data to do my master's and PhD. And if I can inspire someone else, then I think my life's work has been <laughs> successful, right? So please meant to share my details with whoever you would like, share the presentation with whoever you like. Uh, it's free to use, like I said, all our lesson material of the Carpentries is Creative Commons licensed, meaning um, you can use them for your own purpose. Um, just acknowledge the Carpentries. Um, just a, a reminder that unless you are a Carpentries instructor, you cannot call it a Carpentries workshop, but we didn't discover that. To, uh, we'll really discuss that more today. So if you're a Carpentries instructor, you can run an official Carpentries workshop, but if you're not, you can use the material, but just acknowledge the carpentry's community who developed the material. Wow, that's uh, that's well said. Lastly, um, sorry, I'm asking lots of questions. Um, so, lastly, um, I'm, I'm on Slack. I'm on Slack, and I'm on um, the our contributors um, Slack workspace. I'm with the Social Cof. I'm with the Africa Art Organizers speech, and I think um, Hilta has been doing a lot of wonderful things. Um, so far as this is concerned. So, and, and you did mention Slack, so I don't know. Uh, is there a link that we can join your Slack um, community group to learn more about this? So I would yeah. probably appreciate it. Definitely, it's on the welcome tip sheet, um, but let me get you quickly. Let me see if I can find it here. Do, 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 do. It's of course, when you're looking for something, there we go. Copy link. I'm going to share in the chat for those of you who would like to. There we go. Alternatively, you can email me and I can add you from my end on our Slack workspace. And um, I'll also then add you to the African Carpentries community Slack space so you can stay up to date with whatever we discuss there and our calls and all resources I share there as well. Okay. Thank so, you, Jeffrey, um, for your comment. Sorry. <laughs> I just saw Jeffrey's <laughs> comment. So go so ahead. Lastly, um, you know, there are some there are organizations that sponsors uh, our communities in Africa. I know of um, our consortium and our forward and our foundation. I actually run a, um, a community in Ghana uh, called the Ghana User Community, where we help people like what you are doing. That's so my passion. But are there any other sponsors that we can reach out to? You know, want we want like to have this thing more and more like this community workshops like is there any other sponsorship we can reach on or is there any any help you can give it to the communities in Africa to also get some sponsorship so that members can once a while meet face to face instead of uh, in person instead of um always online rely on the online thing it's just a suggestion in this uh there's two that I can think of now at the main moment in the internet society they specifically, well, the call ended end of May, but keep on because they specifically have calls for Ghana at the moment. I'm just going to have a look. Internet Society and the Code for Sciences Society has um, calls every now and again for running community events. Um, let me quickly see if I can get um, Internet Society. 
I'm just going to get their webs. I'll, I'll, I'll share it in the chat for you so you can link there. Um, they have a specific call. They had one for uh, building capacity using the internet in Ghana. And the code for science and society have, um, I think, biannual calls where you put a proposal in for funding of running events, maybe conferences, et cetera. So those are two that I can think of the top of my mind. Analda, I know you're very active in the uh, in the community as well. Is there anything you would like to add? I, I think I think this is actually, um, I, 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 I have been doing this for five years. I have been training people um, in Ghana, in Nigeria, and also in the US, I've been doing this. and. I really want to acknowledge your works. I think I I I, I normally use um, a package in RCUs called Swadili package, where mm -hmm. there are lessons to on it. But um, what you just presented today, um, I think it just opened my eyes. Like there are a lot of resources that you can rely on, but with the um, the Swadili package, I think is a bit limited. Even though with the Swadili package, you can. Um, run your course offline, but I don't know for this because I, I I can see that whatever you are doing here is just remotely, it's online. Is there any way that this thing can be run offline or something? I I just I'm just curious. Yeah. Aside I think. Thank you so much for raising that. So as I mentioned, our workshops can be in person or online. Um, as I showed you that the lessons you can actually download um, the code handbook in R and you can work through the lessons at home. You can also download um, the web pages um, to use at home without internet. So that is easily doable. Let me get you see if I can share my screen in a bit and just uh, maybe I went a bit too quick through that. So I'm on the ecology lesson again. Let's just go back to the ecology because I'm more versed there. So if we have the data analysis and visualization in R for ecologists, we go to the site, right? You scroll through the download the lesson handout. Let's quickly see. And then it's downloaded. You can see it's the R. Let's just double click and see. The R is on my other screen. It's okay. I'll move it down. I just wanted to open quickly. There we go. So what happened now is I opened the R. No, I don't want to. Let me just stop sharing my screen and share it from a new screen. Apologies. Uh, there we go. So can you see the R studio, right? So you can see this is not the project is just open. I literally just opened the um, document I downloaded. So if you scroll down, you can see the challenge. You can see uh, the indexing and subsetting. So it's already in R. You can work through the information. What you also can do is you can save the actual lesson material and HTML files, and you can work through that at home. Sorry, my voice is really, <laughs> you can hear it's going away, right? So I think this is a great way of um, taking it offline and doing it at home by downloading the code handout. And um, you can download, ah, this is something I didn't show you. Apologies. There's so many new updates to our lesson material that, um, I forget that it's there. So you, we downloaded the lesson handout, but you can see it all in one page. Okay, hello. Uh, oh, it's loading now. And if you scroll down, you see it's all the lessons in one page. So what you can do is you can print it as a PDF um, and then you can take that material home and work through that. I mean, so I hope that made sense. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I, and, and I think my question has been answered. I, that is what I actually needed to know. And um, once again, I would like to thank you for your time. And um, uh, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. Thank you very thank much. You. Oh, thank you for your kind words. Um, I don't see any other hands, so I'm going to hand it over to Simi. I'm not. Is she on the call still? Okay. Thanks, Anjali. And Francis, don't you have an event later today at five o'clock? I did mention it earlier before we started. Don't you want to talk about that? Yes, so, so, yes. Yeah. So let me just um, talk about that. So um, I actually have an event um, with uh, just a minute uh, with John. Uh, just a minute. Uh, 
Okay, so I think let me just uh, let me just pull it from here. Um, let me just just for a minute. I just want to um, share the link of the event. Um, it's no problem. Oh. It's actually in the oh. the Google Docs. Let me just add it here quickly. Okay, okay. No yeah, problem. I'll just add it in the chat. Yeah, if you yeah, can I'll add, add it for me, I'll probably be grateful. Yes, if you could do that for me, I'll be grateful. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. And so that link is a link to the form, right? The Google uh, form. Yes, yes please. For everyone who wants yes, to please. register. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll be having John, my my good friend. Um, he's um, from the US, have been um, uh, having workshop with him and we actually do lots of collaborations so far as um, R is concerned. And then, um, he wants to take us through R using the sorry yes wow so he wants to just take us through a workshop which is also similar to what you just did today and then we have a page on Slack we have a page on Slack so um I think the Google Form she said when you join we'll probably be giving more um details about it later today so I think. Go ahead and just click on the link to give you more information about it. I just don't want to waste your time. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that, Francis. And we also have an event together at the end of next month, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. Sure. We have an event together next month. Yeah. Right. And uh, also another thing, Francis, are you aware of the R Consortium funded project? Yeah. So I, 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 I'm actually actually about school because they sent me some funding some other time last year but um my company initially was not registered so um, i contacted helter and she told me to do, do to do that so i have done it and then my website will be ready by the end of next week i'm actually developing a website for my community and it will be ready by next week so as and when that one is done um they said they'll be giving funding for that actually i have a block with our consortium where they interviewed me and we had some chats I'll probably share you the link to the during um to this meetup with John. So regarding our consortium, um once I'm done with my website, they said they'll be giving me the funding. So uh that's just... okay. Thanks for that, Francis. And Anelda, yeah, do we have any um anything that you'd like to share? No, I've shared a few um, extra funding opportunities in the chat and um, shared some of the things that have come through my inbox that is somewhat related, although they're not necessarily exactly are, but perhaps of use to people, yeah. Um, just thank you, Sumi and um, Abira and Angelique. And who was who else was involved in, um, in the, I'm just looking for names, yeah. Everyone who was involved in setting this up, um, really appreciate your work of, for getting this going. And on a Saturday morning for everyone who participated, it was lovely to hear about your needs and your questions and your ideas and hope to see you in the community going forward. Agreed. Right, so I think that's the end of it. So if you guys can reach out to Angelique, Bia, and myself and uh, Anelda. And thank you all for coming. Please reach out and good luck in your art journey. <laughs>